Hello Internet! Welcome to another video where I use my laser cutter and woodworking to make something kinda geeky. In honor of the final season of Game of Thrones, I have finally gotten around to making a topographical map of Essos. I made a map of Westeros a while back, and basically, since the moment that video came out, I've had people asking me to make Essos. The problem is that I made Westeros at a 1 by 2 foot scale, and if I made Essos to matching scale, it would be huge, and that was just totally not doable. I finally decided to just accept that Essos could be made at a different scale and do the darn thing, so here I am making a 1 by 1 foot map of Essos, or at least the western half of Essos. I had, of course, already started the vectors when it occurred to me that I should be recording, so forgive the midway start point. I used a few different maps of Essos found via Google Images as reference. They're all generally similar and not perfect matches. Of course, none of them have actual topographical information, so I just kind of improvise and go off of my own understanding of how mountains tend to form around rivers to get a best guess to where things should go. I use color coding to keep track of which layer it is that I'm making at what point. So my ultimate goal with this is to keep the raster etching to a bare minimum, since that is really time consuming. Fonts make letters that are filled in shapes. Filled in shapes have to be raster etched. If I tell the laser to trace the vectors of the letters, that means that I'll be tracing the outside edge of every single letter, and when the letters are this small, tracing every outer edge is a mess that becomes illegible. It's just not a good way to do letters. So instead, I've created a vector alphabet of my own where each letter is drawn with simple lines. Of course, this means that I've got to manually place each letter instead of the convenience of typing them out, but it's a small price to pay as the end product is dramatically better and much faster. Time to start actually cutting and etching. The base piece is quarter inch plywood, so it's thicker and more sturdy. The main landmass here is only outlined since the first layer of 8th inch wood will be sitting on top of it. The first bit is the only raster etching I do on this piece, and it's only the side borders for decoration. After that, everything is vector drawn. It starts by drawing in the etch lines for the next layer of land, then any words, and finally it'll cut out the pieces. Lots of little pieces here to deal with. And now taking the cut out pieces over to sand them. I did a rough placing of things so you can kind of see the height map end goal as I make my way through the pieces, sanding each of them. I can't use the radial hand sander on the really small pieces, but I try to use it as much as possible because it's just so much easier and faster than sanding each tiny piece by hand. And not sanding them is really not an option. The difference in surface quality between something that I've sanded and something that I haven't is definitely noticeable. The edge of the base piece has pretty charred edges, so I use my belt sander to get rid of it and smooth them over. And here's the part where I sand all those teeny tiny pieces manually with sandpaper. Very tedious. I apply poly to each layer individually because it is just so much easier to sand them before I have started gluing things together. And I intend to sand them. This is only the first coat of polyurethane. After sanding this, I will be applying a second coat to get a glossy surface shine. But this applies to both the big pieces and the tiny ones, so even with those, I do them individually. It's tedious, but it gets a noticeably better end result. So, sidestep here to the back piece. On the Westeros map I've got, I applied a colored wash to the ocean, so for the sake of consistency, I'm gonna do it again here. This was a really time-consuming process way back when I did the first Westeros map, but I've gotten it down now, and it's much less involved and I get much better results. I start with two Dixie cups filled partway up with water. One of them I squeeze in a decent amount of blue acrylic paint, and the other one I leave as just water. I mix in the blue paint and start going around the edges. I want a smooth and gradual gradation from the more saturated, opaqueish blue on the coast to the near colorless distance. So as I move away from the coast, I use more and more of the just water cup. Time skip, and the paint has all dried, and it's time to apply the first coat of poly. I don't apply polyurethane to the wood that's going to be covered up by the next layer. The glue grips okay to the polyed surface, but it grips much better to raw wood. So this is the wood with one coat of polyurethane. 
In person, there is a faint hint of shine, but for the most part, you'd barely guess that it's got a finish applied to it at all. All the more reason it's important to me that I sand and apply a second coat of polyurethane. So after sanding, it looks lighter, dustier, and there's no gloss anymore. But it feels dramatically smoother to the touch, and that'll show once the second coat is applied, clearing off the dust. I wipe it down and I use compressed air. And applying the second coat of polyurethane to everything. The second coat has to be applied much more slowly and gently than the first, in order to avoid any excessive bubbles that could disrupt the finish. Oh yeah, I applied the second coat of poly to the land masses too, let's just pretend I didn't lose that footage. It's nothing you haven't already seen here. Time to glue everything together. I use some weights to keep the surfaces flush against each other while the glue sets. But I'm impatient, so I start gluing the little islands and the second layer land bits that I can still reach while I wait. There's no question that this is the most tedious part. Weight moved, now to get to the parts that it covered up. And here we are! You can really see that high gloss shine. It's totally worth the extra steps and the effort for that shine. Now for some framing. I glue on all these border bits. And a hanger for the back so I can mount it to the wall. All done! And just in time for the new season. I know it's smaller than the Westeros map that I've got, but it's still really cool looking and I'm really happy with the end result. I hope you enjoyed watching me make it as much as I enjoyed making it. Hey, so nostalgia got hold of me recently and I started playing Final Fantasy VII on my Switch. It got me thinking about making a topographic map of the FF7 world map. I can't help but wonder if anyone else would actually give a crap about that. Let me know what you think. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and a share. That would help me a ton. For other videos like this, check out my channel. For this map and the other things that I make like it, check out my Etsy shop. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to be awesome. Bye bye You are so audible. You are totally audible. How am I supposed to record audio when you're purring into my mic?